Hi. The purpose of this lecture is to introduce you to a framework to help understand cross-cultural communication. This framework, called the Hofstede's Cultural Dimensions Theory, was introduced by Hofstede in his book Culture's Consequences and has had an influential role in our understanding of intercultural communication. In the 1970s, Hofstede analyzed a large survey database about values and related sentiments of people in over 50 countries around the world who worked for the multinational corporation IBM. The data collected from the surveys allowed Hofstede to introduce what he calls four dimensions of national culture. According to him, a dimension is an aspect of a culture that can be measured relative to other cultures. In his later research, Hofstede added two new dimensions. The current six dimensions are power distance, uncertainty avoidance, individualism versus collectivism, masculinity versus femininity, pragmatic versus normative, and indulgence versus restraint. Okay, let's look at each dimension individually as defined by Hofstede. Keep in mind that I'm presenting these in no particular order. Let's first look at Hofstede's dimension, power distance. According to his theory, power distance is the characteristic of a culture that defines the extent to which the less powerful persons in a society accept inequality in power and consider it as normal. In other words, inequality exists within any culture, but the degree of it that is tolerated varies between one culture and another. This dimension expresses the degree to which the less powerful members of a society accept and expect that power is distributed unequally. The fundamental issue here is how a society handles inequalities among people. Here are the differences between small power distance and large power distance provided by Hofstad. Next, let's take a look at the dimension called uncertainty avoidance. According to Hofstede, this describes that extent to which people within a culture are made nervous by situations which they perceive as unstructured, unclear, or unpredictable situations which they therefore try to avoid maintaining strict codes of behavior and a belief in absolute truths. According to Hofstede, uncertainty avoidance should not be considered the same as risk avoidance. This dimension considers a society's tolerance for ambiguity. It provides a framework for understanding how people might feel uncomfortable or comfortable in unstructured situations. Here are the differences between weak uncertainty avoidance and strong uncertainty avoidance provided by Hofstede. Individualism versus collectivism looks at two elements. The first, called individualism, suggests individuals are expected to take care of only themselves and their immediate families. The second, collectivism, suggests individuals can expect their relatives or members of a particular in-group to look after them in exchange for unquestioning loyalty. A society's position on this dimension is reflected in whether people's self-image is defined in terms of I or we. According to Hofstede, individualist cultures assume that any person looks primarily after his or her own interest 
and the interest of his or her immediate family, husband, wife, and children. Collectivist cultures assume that any person through birth and possible later events belongs to one or more tight in groups from which he or she cannot detach themselves. Here are the differences between individualism and collectivism provided by Hofstede. Masculinity versus femininity is related to the division of emotional roles between women and men. According to Hofstede, the masculinity side of this dimension represents a preference in society for achievement, heroism, assertiveness, and material rewards for success. Society at large is more competitive. Its opposite, femininity, stands for a preference for cooperation, modesty, caring for the weak and quality of life. Society at large is more consensus oriented. Here are the differences between masculinity and femininity provided by Hofstede. Indulgence versus restraint is related to the gratification versus control of basic human desires related to enjoying life. Indulgence stands for a society that allows relatively free gratification of basic and natural human drives related to enjoying life and having fun. Restraint stands for a society that suppresses gratification of needs and regulates it by means of strict social norms. Here are the differences between indulgence and restraint provided by Hofstede. The pragmatic versus normative dimension describes how people in the past, as well as today, relate to the fact that so much that happens around us cannot be explained. In societies with a normative orientation, most people have a strong desire to explain as much as possible. People in such societies have a strong concern with establishing the absolute truth and a need for personal stability. They exhibit great respect for social con conventions and traditions, a relatively small propensity to save for the future, and a focus on achieving quick results. In societies with a pragmatic orientation, most people don't have a need to explain everything, as they believe that it is impossible to understand fully the complexity of life. The challenge is not to know the truth, but to live a virtuous life. In societies with a pragmatic orientation, people believe that truth depends very much on situation, context, and time. They show an ability to accept contradictions, adapt according to the circumstances, a strong propensity to save and invest, and thriftiness and perseverance in achieving results. So, to sum up this section, Hofstede's cultural dimensions theory is a framework that is used to assist in distinguishing and comparing the values among different country cultures. This is a valuable framework for people like international business managers or others involved in an international business setting because it can assist in avoiding or resolving potential communication barriers or misunderstandings. It's not only useful for the business context, 
Researchers, politicians, and educators have also used this framework as a starting point to help them understand the differences between cultures.